So today I want to talk about picking the right powder for your 223 AR pistol or SBR. And some of my regular viewers are probably saying, dude, you don't even have a short barrel 223 upper. Like, what do you know about it? Well, I get asked about it a lot. And somebody just signed up on Patreon the other day and sent me a, a message asking for some advice on the topic. So rather than kind of type it out and keep it private, I just figured I'd make a video, get my thoughts on the subject out there and see what you guys have to say. Because here's the deal, if I miss it completely, like if I, if I get it all wrong, I'm sure I've got you know viewers that know this subject much better than me, and I definitely invite anyone with knowledge to share it. Nothing makes me happier than being called out for being ignorant, because it's usually an opportunity for some interesting videos. And if that's the case here, I'll buy a barrel and we'll test it. But I'm feeling pretty confident. Like I think I got my head wrapped around what would affect this decision. We've kind of, we've been down this road quite a few times. You know, I learned a lot in the early days with 300 Blackout, but also, you know, the other AR cartridges we've shot and well, just the last video I put up, I'm just getting into 762 by 39 and I'm loading for the SKS. And one of my first questions and you know, the one I'm still exploring in that series is, you know, what powders are appropriate to run this action and get this gun shooting the way I want. And I'm finding out in that series, I can actually shoot much, much faster burning powders than I thought I would be able to. And that's really what most of this is all about. It's about picking the right burn rate. Cause like um, imagine a car that you need to move by pushing it. And imagine all your, you know, all your CQB training in the kill house with your SBR, like you're jacked. You're absolutely jacked. You're all hopped up on black rifle coffee and you know, you're strong enough to just dent the car with a simple push, but you don't want to dent the car. So you kind of, you know, you figure out the max pressure that you can apply to the car. Now, if you imagine pushing as hard as you possibly can for one second, like no like slow ramp up, just as hard as you can for one second, you're not going to get much work done, right? Not going to move the car very far. But if you push it slower, you know, kind of slowly ramping up to that maximum pressure and you do that for 20 seconds, that's going to be a whole lot more energy put into moving that car. And that's, that's fast burning powder versus slow burning powder. Now, if you think about that same car, if you wanted to push it off a cliff and you want the car's velocity to be as high as possible as it's going over, like at the precipice. So how would your, your pushing strategy change as the distance to the cliff changes? So if you've got 50 feet, that's plenty of room. You just take it easy, really get a lot of energy into rolling the car. Now, if the car is one inch from the cliff, you got no other choice than to do like max pressure as quickly as possible. So that's your barrel length. Now, if you imagine that you misjudged, you pushed it a little bit too slow and you fell off the cliff with the car. That's the equivalent of like blowing unburned powder out of your barrel. Burns too slow, doesn't get the job done by the time the barrel's done and then just gets wasted in a big fireball. So that's kind of the basics of it, right? We need to pick a fast powder that is going to give us a complete or nearly complete burn in our short little barrel. So let's have a look at the burn rate chart from Hodgton's website. Uh, there's a chart like this in all of your reloading manuals or you know the other powder manufacturer sites. I generally go back to the Hodgton because it's pretty close to complete. Like there's not a lot of powders missing from this list. Yeah, it's just the one I generally reference first. So all in all, it's a, it's a big old list, 163 powders listed from fastest burning at number one to slowest at the end. And it's not like a linear progression up the chart. There might be five powders right next to one another that are nearly identical. And then there might be five others that cover a big jump in burn rate. So you just, you gotta be careful and know what this, what this chart's showing you and what it's not. All it's showing is the burn speed. So there, there are some general like regions on the chart, at least in my mind. There's a ton of overlap and there's a few like specialty powders in here, but like in my mind, it's kind of broken down like this. You got fast, slow, magnum pistol, you got fast, medium, slow, and magnum rifle. And then at the end, you've got some stuff that's like 50 BMG stuff. So if you go look around the load data for 223 and 556, you'll find powders listed from about like number 65 on this list all the way up to 130. I mean, that's nearly half the chart are powders that can be used in 223. I mean, you know, that, that really has to do with the popularity of, of just medium rifle cartridges. If I highlighted the powders for 308, or you know whatever your other favorite like medium rifle cartridge is it would it would almost be the same list of powders so within this region our definition of fast and slow needs to reset so if i'm talking about 223 and i mention a powder is fast or if it's slow 
I mean within this list that we've already carved out as appropriate powders for the cartridge. Let's, let's, let's forget the rest of the chart. Now within this range of powders, the faster burning ones are generally used most often with light bullets and slower powders are more common with heavy bullets. In general, slow powders are bulkier. It takes higher charge weights to get the pressure you're after, plus the powder is bulky, so eventually you run out of available case capacity. And faster powder means lower charge weights and often an excess of case capacity. So before we go any further here, we have to determine the bullet weights we're interested in. The guy who asked this question on uh, Patreon said he wanted to try and clone the 75 grain Hornady Interlock HD SBR Black Factory Ammo. And I assume that most SBR and pistol folks are gonna be interested in those you know, military weights, the 55s to the 77s. So I went through and picked out the first three powders I would want to test if I just got a short 223 barrel. The guy from Patreon was asking about like an 11 and a half inch barrel, but that's really like, yeah, that seems too easy. I wanted to consider the, the seven and a halfs and the eight inch barrels. So I, I'll explain a little bit more about the, the flexibility you get as your barrel gets longer later. But right now we're, we're picking out powders for the really short barrels. So since our stupid car analogy already explained that we're going to need very fast burning powder for a short barrel so we get a complete burn, I'm going to reduce the size of our powder list immediately and like considerably. I've lined up some of the most popular 223 powders. So like uh, Ramshot Tack, too slow, just too slow. H4895, Varget, all of these are too slow. 8208XBR, CFE223, way too slow. Accurate 2520, Power Pro Varmint. Both of those are too slow. How about H335 and Benchmark? Mm, now we're getting closer. Now we're getting faster. I'm still gonna call them too slow, too slow. So that's not to say these powders won't work in an SBR. They absolutely will. Depending on your gun, one of these might be the perfect powder. And we'll get to that later. Like I'm, I'm assuming that the 223 pistol market is a lot like 300 blackout in that there are like a ton of crappy barrels out there. Some of them have pistol gas, they should have carbine. Some have carbine, they should have pistol. 10 million different gas port sizes, tons and tons of like, talk about buffers and springs and lightweight carriers and adjustable gas blocks and keys and all of that crap. I probably should have done a little bit more research to make sure these are actual things that go on, but I, I figure they are. And at least in 300 blackout, like smart powder selection can work you out of those issues. So I guess this video is assuming those same issues exist in the 223 world. So back to our powder list. I decided to cut off the powder list right above Benchmark and H335 that I just mentioned. I've shot both of those powders enough in standard length barrels with carbine and rifle length gas to know that like they're still easily getting the job done cycling and we should be able to go to faster burning options. Now gun compatibility is something I should mention here. If you work up a load with a really fast powder that's tuned perfectly to your SBR, it might not run your big gun. Like maybe you got an 18 inch or a 20 inch with rifle gas and you've tuned the gas system. Like it, it's probably gonna be under gassed with these loads. So what I did, I took the 17 powders from my shortened list and I looked for available load data for 75 and 77 grain bullets. I found three of them that had multiple load data sources and, and, and like, re remember, th these fast powders are normally used for light bullets, so tracking down heavy bullet data is not super easy. So these are the powders I chose. H322, IMR3031, and Vitavori N133. So these three are, are not that far above our cut line, so there are a lot of even faster options still, but the problem was coming up with load data. So like I mentioned, each of these I found two sources of load data for 75s and 77s. And once I did that, I actually, I, I weighed out the max charge of each of them and just dumped it in a case to, to have a look and see how much of the case was filled. And it was pretty good. I don't think a max charge of any of these is gonna get the case totally full. Like it's not gonna be compressed, but it's a reasonably full case. Another powder I was considering was Accurate LT30 and the Western Load Guide, which is uh, Western makes accurate, or actually they, they just got bought by Hodgson, did it? I don't know, whoever, whatever, but the, the Western Powder Load Guide has got 77 grain data for LT30, but whenever I weighed out the charge, I just, the case fill wasn't quite there. Now there's another powder, there's an LT32 that is a little bit slower burning than LT30, 
charge weight's a little bit higher, case fill a little bit better. So LT32 might have been the better choice. And th this LT30 probably would have been just fine as well. But I think 32 would be the perfect one. Alliant Reloader 7 is one that I really wanted to pick. I just couldn't find the load data sources. I think this would be perfect. And if this is just a little bit too fast, there's Reloader 10X. So a couple other good options to consider. Especially, you know, maybe you're a little bit more comfortable with reloading and you don't mind extrapolating some load data, kind of coming up with your own numbers. Accurate 5744 was another uh, IMR 4198 and there's an H4198 on our short list. I think either one of those would be great. And these are the two that I don't know about. Like they're right there in the burn rate chart where we want them to be, but I haven't found any 223 load data for these. Maybe I just didn't look in the right place, but it looks like they would be just about perfect. These are ball powders. Most of the other ones we've talked about have been extruded powders. Like as far as ball powders on the list, I think it's, let's see, it's, it's these two plus accurate 2200. And that's about it. Yeah, that is it. Now there's, uh, so there's Alliant Power Pro 1200R. Yeah, so there's a few. Now the little fine ball powders, you, you sometimes really struggle to, to get a case full enough. So I'm, yeah, I'm not sure what case fill would look like with these guys. And that's something I, I might test that in, in my 18 inch 223, just out of curiosity. Now you might be saying to yourself, like all these powders we've just talked about, you're gonna have, your velocity is gonna be very low. Well, if we go back to the factory ammo that my Patreon supporter is hoping to clone, the Hornady site shows a muzzle velocity of 2321 out of a 20 inch barrel. That, that's almost 600 feet per second slower than they list on their other 556 75 grain factory ammo. So their long barrel ammo is 600 feet per second faster. And you might be thinking, so if it only does 2321 out of a 20 inch barrel, it's probably even much lower with the short one. Well, if the powder's fast enough that it's getting a complete burn in the short one, the longer barrel isn't gonna gain much. I've seen the same thing in 300 Blackout. A lot of the factory subsonic ammo shoots, it shoots a thousand feet per second, no matter what length barrel you're shooting. And that they, they achieve that with really fast burning powder selection. Now my hand loads with slower burning powders, like, uh, yeah, like 1680 or CFE Black we were just looking at. These have significant velocity differences between short and long barrels because they're kind of slow burning for the application. They're extremely gassy. Like in blackout, this is really good for, you know, if you've got that carbine length gas system and the barrel really should have had a pistol gas, well, it'll probably still run just fine with Accurate 1680, even with the carbine gas. So slower powder gets us that, but we have to tune loads for barrel length. So, but, but back to our SBR ammo, th this isn't about velocity, right? It's like CQB ammo. It's about the gun running smoothly with minimal recoil and like, you know, less muzzle flash because of the complete burn, which that, that's a deeper topic. And I didn't really look into it as far as flash suppressant performance goes with these powders. Well, like Hodgson H322 is a, a pretty modern powder. It's in the Hodgson Extreme line. Like I assume it's got flash suppressants that are probably about as good as anything. Or H4198, same thing, it's an extreme powder. Now, IMR3031, is an old school powder that's been around a million years. So maybe it's not as good. I don't know, maybe they updated the formula and it's got flash suppression just as good as everything, but wouldn't surprise me to find that it didn't. I don't know. Like I'm kind of giving you a possible shopping list and my reasoning behind it, and then you'll need to further refine it for whatever matters most to you, whether it's availability or you know muzzle flash or whatever. Uh, the other big one's clean burning versus dirty. You know, usually you get a uh, nice complete burn of a fast powder, it generally leads to clean shooting. But you know, some of these might be dirtier than others. But okay, back to the subject of, of slightly longer barrels. You know, like let's say you don't have a seven and a half or an eight, you've got that 11 and a half. Well, I mean, that opens up the possibility that some of those slower powders that I cut out while I was being overly cautious for their super short barrels, well, they can come back. Yeah, maybe a, maybe a 335 would be okay. But then again, we may find that, yeah, th this isn't gonna work for any SBR sort of stuff. And maybe this group is about right for the, for the longer barrels, the 11 and a halfs. But if you've got a super short one, maybe you do have to explore that very fastest end of our powder list or even expand it. You know, maybe, maybe I've missed the mark here and maybe 
you actually need to get into some Magnum pistol powders before we get where we need to be. I'm not certain. Now the same, same thing happens with bullet weight. Like let's say you're not going to shoot 75s and 77s, you're going to shoot 69s or you're going to shoot 65s or 62s. Well, as you go lighter with bullet weight, well, first of all, you're going to find a whole lot more load data for all of these powders. The whole thing's going to be less confusing. You're just going to have a, a lot more load data the lighter you go and your charge weights will be higher and your case fill will be better. So it all has to be taken into account. So back to that factory ammo in particular. So that 75 grain interlock from Hornady, I don't think it's available to us as reloaders, but there are some other good options, you know, for, for serious ammo. There's the full line of gold dots. Yeah, 55, 62, and 75 grain gold dots. Or the 65 grain Sierra Game King I've had luck with. But all of those bullets I just mentioned are really designed to retain weight and penetrate. So if you're wanting something a little bit more explodey, you might need to look into the heavy options available in varmint bullets. So, you know, plenty of 22 bullets to choose from. So is that it? Like, I feel like I barely scratched the surface. I'm not sure if this was coherent. Hopefully it was helpful to some, you know, I might've missed the mark a little bit just due to not knowing exactly how picky these 223 short barrels are, but at the very least, you know, might give you enough knowledge. So, you know, that the guy telling you that CFE 223 is the perfect SBR powder, but yeah, he probably, uh, probably not. He probably doesn't have his head wrapped around what's going on. Or maybe he just likes making fireballs and has his gun tuned for super hot ammo. I don't know. All right, that's it, folks. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.